Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching the Arkansas Gun Guy. Today, another in a series I think I'm going to call Firearm Comparisons That No One on the Interwebs Is Looking For, But I'm Going to Do Anyway. And this is why I don't have a million followers. Well, that's probably too long of a title. But I want to take a close-up look at H&K's VP9 and the Delta from A-Rex. This is the Delta X. And I'll talk about some of the different variations of Deltas and VP9s as we go through it. Again, not a lot of comparisons out there of these two guns. They are two striker fire polymer frame guns, uh, different ends of the price point spectrum. The A-Rex can be had for a pretty low price if you shop online. Uh, and the H&K has a pretty high MSRP, some of the highest of most polymer frame striker fire guns. Although lately, I've been seeing this guy on sale for a really nice price on Palmetto State. So shop around, your mileage may vary. Again, there's also different options on all these. This VP9 is the non-optics version with night sights. I'll talk about the sights in a second. This a, uh, Delta X is the uh, optics ready version with just standard uh, sights on there. Again, we'll take a closer look at those. But again, they may, you may not think they're the same customer, but they have a lot, a lot in common. Um, I'll start actually at the back and go forward. Again, both polymer frame, they both come with adjustments that you can make on the grip with adjustable back, back straps. Uh, the H&K comes with three adjustable back straps, small, medium, and large. This is the large, you may note the kind of swell there. So this comes with three back straps. The Delta actually comes with four, this one better, right? So it comes with a small, medium, large, and I think an extra large or a larger with a beaver tail. So tons of options to customize the way these feel. Now, while the uh, Delta does come with one more back strap than the VP9, one really cool feature of the VP9 is the fact that you can also adjust the side panels, much like the P30. So you can adjust, you can have an extra large back strap and a small side panel. Um, it's super, super adjustable to make it very comfortable. And I'm going to tell you now, I do think the VP9 is way more ergonomic and comfortable than the Delta. Delta, you can see, is kind of blocky, kind of glocky, blocky. Uh, it's not uncomfortable, but H&K has really figured out the ergonomics thing. They just feel fantastic in your hand. And while I have it here, I'll kind of highlight the stippling on here. You can see all the wonderful stippling H&K does. Again, it feels not too much, not too aggressive. Uh, it feels just perfect in your hand. They spend a lot of time making sure these guns feel great. And you do have the finger grooves. Some may love them, some may hate them. I think it makes this guy uh, feel really good in your hand. And the Delta is no joke. Uh, it just has different level of stippling you can see on here. Again, not too rough, not too rough. And it, again, feels fine in my hand. But the back strap also has slightly more aggressive stippling, I think. This feels more, more grippy than the side panels to me, as well as the front stippling there. So both have nice stippling all the way around, easy to maintain control of. Uh, and just different size adjustments. I will tell you they both come standard with 17 round magazines, but H&K comes with two 17 round magazines. The VP9 comes with a 17 round magazine and an extended uh, plus two base on this guy. Somewhere it says plus two on here, I think. Uh, maybe I'm dreaming. But uh, this is a 19 round magazine that comes with it too. So you can pop out the 17 round and do 19 rounds. Again, it feels like the A-Rex just tries really hard to add a ton of value, and I'm really impressed impressed by that. Um, another feature that I love on both of them, I'll go ahead and hit this now, is the fact that they are both, both 100% ambidextrous. Not, you can reverse the, the, uh, the, slide, the uh, mag drop or anything. Everything about both firearms is 100% ambidextrous. I'll start with H&K, which has a slide stop here. Slide stop on this side too. It has my favorite style uh, mag release of all times with the paddle release, good for left-handers or right-handers. I still activate my trigger finger, but it is cool to have the option. You can do it with either hand. So love, love, love the fact that the they're both fully ambidextrous. Again, the Delta has slide stop, slide catch here and here. These are the same size. And again, this looks like a normal button to release the mag that you push this side and drops it or could be reversible, but no, this guy is reversible as a fully ambi as it comes to the box. You can release the mag with this button or flip over and you can release the mag with this button. So the fact that they're both 100% ambidextrous is a big plus for a left-hander like me who lives with a bunch of right-handers in my family. We can all shoot the guns and have no problems at all. I will tell you my probably biggest complaint on the Delta is that when you have a full magazine, it is a bear to drop the, drop the uh, magazine out if you wanted to. Again, I don't normally drop a full magazine. I try to shoot them all, then drop it. 
no problems there. But if you do have a full magazine, this thing can be tough to drop out. Uh, both have good size trigger guards, not enormous, but big enough to use gloves if you wanted to, I think. Uh, it looks like the Delta has got some more texturing on the bottom here and on the front. They have texturing all over on this firearm. We'll talk about that in a second. For the H&K, smooth on the bottom. It does have some detail on the front in case you'd like to wrap your finger around there. Both come with the standard pick rail. Uh, the H&K is slightly larger than the Delta just because of the models I chose. I'll go ahead and hit that while I'm here, actually. There's a Delta, a Delta uh, Compact, I think, and a Delta X, which is a combination of those. Uh, the regular size Delta has a longer slide, probably like the VP9. The X has a shorter slide, like the Compact, but it has a longer grip. So again, the full size has long grip, long slide. The Compact has shorter barrel, shorter uh, uh, grip. The X combines the longer grip and shorter slide. Standard VP9 here, they do make a long version, which is super accurate. I have one of those as well, and tons of fun to shoot. So again, very cool features on those. One thing I really love on the Delta that's not on the H&K are these little memory pads here. I think CZ does a good job with them as well, but just good places to index your finger or just use as reference points uh, when you have your support hand up there. So love, love, love this kind of cool feature here. Again, it feels like A-Rex does a whole lot in this firearm for, for the money. Uh, I'll also take a look at the sights on here. Again, this guy is optics ready and it comes with a bunch of optics plates on there. I actually haven't tried to run an optic on it yet, but it comes with a, a good half a dozen, if not more, different plate options for you. And again, it comes with standard front, uh, white dot front sight and black dot rears, which I think is a very nice view. Again, you'll see serrations everywhere on this firearm, which I think is just an interesting detail. Uh, they've got you know little diamond shapes here and here, uh, more texture here and there. It's just all over the gun. But it's a good sight picture, white dot up front. Comparing that to the VP9, again, these are the night sights and they are totally awesome. Again, you get the blacked out rears, but you get that big green dot up there, which for me is a really nice feature and is really easy to shoot. I'll look at the trigger last, but one more thing I wanna look at is a very cool feature I like. Uh, and I first saw it on the H&K, but I think other people do it now too. And this is striker indicator, to show if this firearm is, is cocked or not. So I'll drop the magazine, so clear. And you'll see right now, I hope this shows up on camera, uh, you don't see anything and the trigger is dead, nothing in there. If you rack the slide, it is now, the striker is now cocked and you should see a red dot there. I think you can see it on camera if I get the light just right. And then you pull the trigger, go to bang, and it goes away. So once it's cocked, you see the red dot. So just in case you forget, you shouldn't, when you hold this in front of your face or present in front of your sight line, you can see that the firearm is cocked and ready to go. So that's a very nice feature just in case you needed it. The Delta does that one better, I think. So we're gonna drop the magazine out, show clear. Has the same indicator back here, or same port rather. Rack the firearm. Now the striker is cocked, see the red dot there. One thing I don't love about striker fire guns is the fact that it has a live round in there pointed at your junk. Hammer fire guns, at least when you holster it, you can put your thumb on the hammer and there's no way the firearm's gonna go off. Strikers, you, that is a risk that could happen. If you have a proper holster, it'll never happen, but just in case, one thing I like about the H, the um, A-Rex rather, is that if somehow this gets stuck on garment, something inside the holster, something, and you start to pull the trigger, Watch what happens to this red dot. Hopefully I can do it without activating it. It starts to come out. And let's see if I can make it on camera here. See that protrudes out there slightly? Now, I'm used to putting my thumb on the hammer. So when I holster this thing, if it were to activate the trigger, that thing pops out there like that. Get close. And it is sharp and it hurts. So again, if I am holstering it and I were to get caught, for me, that's a very cool safety feature. It says stop when you feel that pressure because it really hurts on your thumb. So very cool safety feature there. Um, one thing I forgot to mention on the H&K, it's kind of divisive amongst H&K fans, uh, are these wings, are these ears. And H&K try to make this thing useful for everybody. VP, Volx pistol, the people's pistol. It's like a Volkswagen, except it's a gun. Uh, are these ears back here, are these cocking ears. You kind of protrude out. And you know, I thought maybe they're kind of silly, but actually 
it really does make it easy to rack the gun. You can still do press checks up here with these serrations. You can rack it normally back here, but these ears do make it really, really easy to rack. And I think that's just a nice feature. So again, that's just a quick side-by-side -side view of two, I think, really good polymer frame striker fire guns. Again, if you watch the channel, you know I'm more of a hammer fire guy, hammer fire guy. But again, these are both fantastic options. And gosh darn it, one thing I forgot, the other really cool feature about this A-Rex, which is out of the camera, is how thin it is. Each and case a normal size gun, it's fine. This Delta is skinny, and it may not come across on there, but this thing is like P365 skinny. It's one of the thinnest guns I own and makes it super easy to carry, even with a larger uh, footprint and you know uh, barrel. It is so easy to conceal because it's so thin. Well, this guy is just a little bit chunkier. So again, a couple of really cool features, cocking ears there, incredibly thin profile of the A-Rex. So love to hear from you guys. Are you a Delta fan? Love to hear about what you think about your Delta. Are you a VP9 fan? I know you're out there. And what do you guys think about the VP9? Uh, and does anybody own both? I can't imagine you do, but if you do, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. It helped me grow my channel. Thanks. Sorry, guys, one last thing before I almost forgot the triggers. I mentioned those. I don't take a look at the triggers because I think that uh, it's just worth noting. Uh, I seem to shoot the h &K a little better than the Delta. Uh, it could be the longer sight radius. It could be the sights. I'm not sure. But the trigger in the uh, VP9 is good. Let's look at, take a look at it. So the trigger, get the light right here. Trigger, you got a little bit of take up and then break. Feels nice, nice and clean, crisp. There's your reset. A little bit of take up and your wall and it breaks. So one more time. Reset, very audible, tactile, you feel it. And a little bit of take up and it breaks. So now let's look at the Delta. Again, they have the same trigger safety on there. A little bit of take up, feels, feels a little uh, clunkier inside there. Not quite as smooth, but it goes bang. Watch the reset. That's it. Much shorter reset. Small, small bit of take up, and there you go. Super audible and tactile, but a much shorter reset on the Delta than the VP9. Not saying better, but I'm saying it is a much shorter reset. This one feels smoother, uh, but this one is definitely shorter. I shoot them both really well. I do shoot the VP9 a little better. So again, sorry I forgot that in the first part of the video. Thanks for sticking around this long. Appreciate y'all.